Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting tutorial about dependency injection. So dependency injection is one of those million dollar coding terms that when you start to look it up online and you read definition after definition of what it is, it becomes more and more confusing until you understand it even less and less than when you started. But dependency injection is actually really, really simple. So what it comes down to is that uh, a function or a class, so let's say a function like this, the buy from function, has arguments that are passed in, and a class, when it's initialized, has arguments that are passed in. And if you have inside of that class or function, it relying on assumptions and doing functionality based on what's being passed into it, um, that is not a good thing because you are making assumptions in another class about what a first class is and what it does. And why is that not a good thing? Well, that makes what's called tight coupling. So if we have things that are tightly coupled and you change something in one class and five other classes break, if you've ever experienced that while coding something, then you know what tight coupling is. That means that your code is too tightly coupled together or of course, that's what it means, but that means that your code is reliant on too many things from separate parts of the code that aren't in the class itself that are causing a very, very brittle code structure. And what you want to aim for is what's called loose coupling. So loose coupling is the opposite of that, where you make changes in one class and it's not breaking other things because all of the code is nicely self-contained. Okay, so let's look at an example of a before and after of something that is tightly coupled against something that is loosely coupled. So we have a game here. This is an economic simulation game. We have a food market that is made. Uh, this market is uh, has items in it. So let's see what an item is. Well, it's just a name with a string. Um, we have a person being generated. This is John Krakmalakin. He's 20 years old and he has $300. Uh, and you can see we got uh, age, inventory, and money that we can give to them with money and inventory having optional, uh, being optional parameters. So person number two though is old one eye. An old one eye is 30 years old. <laughs> I'm significantly older than 30 years old, so I just find it funny calling him old one eye. Anyways, he has an inventory of 30 food, uh, but no money. So on the first day, we're going to take a look at what they have, and then we're going to do two functions. The buy from the food market is buying from, or we have a buy from the market function. So person number one is going to buy with his $300, he's going to buy 10 things of food. Food person number two is going to sell 15 things of food. And um, at, yeah, we'll have a printout of what that looks like. And then again, we'll do an adjust price, well, we'll have an adjust prices. And so what that means is that um, when the market has a buy, it increases the demands, and when the market has a sell, it increases the, the sale, the supply by one. Um, and um, whatever there, like if there's demand, let's say of in this case, ten, and a supply of fifteen, that's going to cause the prices to go down by ten percent every time it adjusts prices. And if there's a demand of fifteen and a supply of ten, that'll cause the prices to go up. Okay, so let's just look how this runs, and if any of that was confusing, hopefully it'll be less now. So we see it has price of 10, and it'll drop to 9 because we had a demand of 10 and a supply of 15. Meanwhile, John Croc Malakin is getting his food, and he's spending his money, and Old One Eye is getting some money, and he's spending his food. And then we got, and day two as well, we've got a little more demand than we have supply, so the price is going to go up. And then John Crack Malakin's getting all his food for his money. And old one eye is getting to sell all his food and getting some money. Okay, so great. So let's see, let's dive into what is the problem. Okay, we've got a market class. Well, first I'll show you the person class. There's not much going on here. It's just a data class. We just kind of looked at it already. No functionality though. But um, yeah, so on the market class, we've got a buy from function, which if the price of the item times the quantity being bought is greater than the person's money, we can say raise not enough money. Well, that's a good thing to do. Obviously, we want to check if the person has enough money. But this is part of the problem that I was talking about at the beginning, where the person has a money attribute, and we're assuming that in the market class. So 
what happens if we um, wanted to introduce a new class of business that a business also buys things from the market and also has food, but has food in a catalog and it doesn't have money, it has funds. So if we try to sell to from the business, well, you could probably guess there's no attribute inventory. So we can't do it because it's tightly coupled to the person. The market cannot buy and sell things to a business because it's tied to a person. So that's a problem. Um, that's tight coupling between the market and the person. Anyways, we've also got the person's money being subtracted by the price and the quantity. Also a problem because the market is doing something on the person, <clears throat> but the person is not the market, and that causes a tight coupling. So, yeah, and then we actually have another thing we're doing on the person. We're adding to the person's inventory. We're adding to a quantity. And the last thing we do is not related to the person. It's actually the only thing in here that is related to the market, which is adding to the demand of the market. So uh, you can see this is kind of an issue for uh, if we wanted to add a business to this game or anything that wasn't a person that interacted with the market, because now the market works only with people. Um, the adjust prices function, though, totally great. All this is good. As you can see, it's only dealing with things. Well, it has no arguments being passed in, so it's only dealing with things on itself. This is totally well contained. There's not any issues by, by the way of dependency injection, at least, or by the way of coupling, at least. Okay, so let's look at what maybe a, a solution could look like to this. Okay, so we've got a food market. We've got old... Old one eye, we got John Crack Malakin, we got Sally's old time food snacks, and as a business. Now, first thing we, we might notice is that we're start initiating it on the person. And we're initiating the sell. To start, we're initiating the purchase and the sell on the person. And the business, we're also initiating sell stock, which is their function. That's a little bit different than sell. Yeah, it's the same function, but it's just a different class or whatever. So slightly different um, logic because of the different fields. Okay, but you may notice something new here. So we're not just passing the price and the quantity anymore. And in this case, we're passing the item name and the quantity that we want to sell to the market. Um, and the price, by the way, we are getting it from the food market, but we're not getting, we're not passing in the food market and then assuming things in the person class. That's something important to note here. So we're grabbing it outside of here and we're passing in the price. And so the person is not being this purchase is not being uh, uh, going to have to make assumptions about what happens in a market. Okay, and then we pass the success callback. So we're passing this buy from function from the food market to this. So let's look at this purchase one. Well, now, as you can see with the person, we're doing all the logic that has to do with the person. So we're checking if the price and the quantity is greater than their money, not enough money. And if it is okay, then we're calling the success callback. And that is returning us the item. So let's go look at that one. Buy from this food market. This is only doing market stuff. When we buy from it, it increases the demands and it returns the item that it, we're buying from it. Now, we could return also the quantity, but we actually already have that. I was kind of toying with that because this is not, this does, like if you came across this in the wild as, a, as another coder, you'd be like, what? So maybe not the best way to do this, but this is just for an illustrative purpose. If I wanted to expand upon this, I'd make it like a dictionary returning a bunch of information about the transaction that succeeded from the market. Because you never know how this game is going to go. But anyways, at this point, all we need is the item back. So if we look back at the person, it's grabbing that item, it's doing that, and then it's incrementing the inventory with what it needs because it has the item. And with selling as well, this time it just gets back the price because that's all it needs. And again, the market is only doing what the market needs to do. Self supply is that. And so uh, it ups the supply of the quantity and then returns the price. And here we're doing all the things that we need to do as a person. So if you changed it around or we have a new, whoops, this is the before. If you have a new entity come in, the business entity, which again, it does what it needs to do to check to see if it can do this transaction, because that's the business's business <laughs> in the catalog. And then 
uh, it does what it needs to afterwards after it has a successful callback. But the success callback um, could be anything. So it could be something from the market that's being passed in. It could be a different function, could be a different um, class in the market entirely. And that's the most important thing is that the business does not care at all that this is a market. It's just saying, what do I do with this info? Where do I send it to? This could be anything. And so same thing with the item name. This could come from anything. You could just type in an item name here. It doesn't have to come from the food market. So there's no coupling here at all between um, the person and the market. And I'm running out of time, but that's everything I have to say. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and have a great one.